the Holy Bible, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 29. The Holy Bible. And I'm going to take you into, if you've never been, may you never have been, I'm going to take you inside of a bar room where it's dark and it smells wickedly and there's chattering going on all kinds of sin fornication adultery boozing it up all kinds of weird tones <sighs> jukebox in the corner pool table drinks and what the holy bible says who has woe you know, when God says, whoa, you better pay attention to the Bible. You know, in the, in the tribulation period, there, there are three woes. Go over in Revelation and read about those three woes. Woe in the Bible is not something, it's not in a simple word. It's a harsh word. It's troubles and problems. We all have woes. It's a fact of life that we have woes. We got short verses, so I think I can pause and talk. Who has sorrow? Well, man is born into sorrow. When they remove those nose plugs, instead, you know, they used to, television tells you they slap you on the, on the rear end. It's when they remove the nose plugs, I was told by. Uh, the baby doctor, and the, and the child gets his first breath. It's a scary thing. That's what causes the child. So a child is born crying. His mother is crying while giving birth. The father gets the medical bill from Obamacare, and he begins to cry. Uh, he, sorry. Um, it's sorrow. It's a sorrow that's awful joyfulness, but this is this is a woe and a sorrow together. We all have woe. We all have sorrow. Who has contention? Well, Paul writes in Corinthians. Listen, if you if you're going to get married, you're going to have trouble. I believe he, that's the word he uses. You can't get two people together. For any length of time and not have an argument or a misunderstanding. Co-worker, sibling, brethren in the church. That's natural. Woes, sorrows, and contentions are natural. Who has babbling? Well, not everybody, unless you, you know, when you start off as a baby. But you grow up out of that. Paul said, you know, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, but now I've grown up, you know, I, I, I can speak. I guess you can say the charismatic movement with their tongues, they're babbling. So now we, we stepped out. For a normal human. He's grown up. He doesn't speak babbling anymore. But he did. You know what? I guess you can say we've all done it. We've all babbled. Who have who has wounds without cause? I don't know about that one. Every wound has to have something. Whether you've been pierced, you rubbed against something. The other night at work, I was just looking at my hands and realized I gouged three of my fingers. Didn't know something did that. There is a means to be having wounds. When you didn't see it or don't remember it happening. So now we definitely have stepped out of the well. You need something to get wounds. 
something to happen to you without cause who has redness of eyes well allergies maybe a lack of sleep for a night being in smoke those are six questions And if we were to stop right there, we could look at those questions and we could study them all night long and we can have fun and go to no amount of time. But the answer is in the Bible. They that tarry long at wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. Now, that go, Mark 16, 15, the Bible says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. See, the Bible is not written for the unsaved. They're not going to read the Bible. They don't care. You've got born-again Christians who don't even read the Bible and care. This is a message here that should be taught by the pulpit from a preacher. Because a drunk is going to go by or skip this chapter totally. Because he knows it's in there. If he doesn't know it's in there, Satan does. And Satan does not want to give the drunk why he has problems. So God, the Holy Spirit, has spoken with the six questions and giving you the answer. And he uses a two-letter word, which is a verb. And did you know that go is the only word in the English language that's also a complete sentence? Go. This person is going for that which he should not be going. It is the answer to the six questions. It strikes young and old, rich and poor, all races, sexes, regardless of position of life. We had, a couple years ago, we had the President of the United States sit down with two men on uh, the Rose Garden or whatever outside the, uh, outside the White House, and sit down with the three men there at the table and had, had a beer. You can't pass any magazine advertisement without seeing alcohol. Why can't you have this printed on the race cars on the doors along with, with the beer emblems for NASCAR? You, I'm not mocking AA. They started out right, and they just, like everything else, they've gone wrong. Why not have that, verse 29 and 30, as the motto? If that would have been the motto and the foundation, they might have been still doing right today. They were once a Bible foundation. They are not today. I spoke to a guy at AA. I asked him, did they talk about God and the, and the Bible and Jesus? No. Who has woes? Many that drink. Money. Family. Work. Health. And we can go all night with all, each of those categories. Not showing up for work, being sick, uh, the diseases, the, the wife is unhappy, 
The children don't get all what they should and may even get what they shouldn't be getting, beating. Who has sorrow? I have dealt with drunks. I have been drunk. And the sorrow, the crying, the tears. There are some drunks out there, the sorrow is they don't have money anymore. It's their Friday gone by before even Saturday hits. Who has contentions? I have been in enough bars to, to, to know the real life. There's, there's always somebody there that's the greatest boxer in the world. He can take everybody on. He's so drunk. Who has contentions when he comes home and fights with his family with that junk in him? Who has Babylon? Oh, you hear it. Babylon is the language of a barroom after many drinks. And when you're in the street ministry as we are, you will hear the Babylon. And you will smell the breath. And you don't dare light a match. Who has wounds without cause? Falling down, tripping down, getting beaten up. Getting hit by a car. Getting in an accident with a car. Who has redness of eyes? Now, I've got the redness of eyes. I have been accused. But I don't drink. Redness of eyes is, is not natural. Your eyes are supposed to be white. Red. Get that color. Get that color. Red. How red will be associated with liquor. Oh, we, we, we got the nice wine. We got white wine. You know, you got white witches and you got black. You know, they're always. They that tarry long at wine. Now, you know, you know, well, I don't tarry long. I just take a sip. See, there's always an excuse to sin. And they that go to seek mixed wine. Well, I, you know, it's not mixed wine. It's just, you know. Jesus made wine. Jesus turned water into wine. Yeah, but if you go over there and read that, you know what it says? When they had tasted the water, <laughs> there's more emphasis on the water. So, they that tarry long at wine. That's an excuse. I don't tarry, at, you know, I just have a drink at dinner time or every once in a while. You really? I always said in the person, I, I say it all the time, really. You want to stop right there? You want to close your Bible? You want to live a lie? Or do you want to read the Bible and study it? Do you want to know what God says? Because God's got an answer to your excuse. Judge not, least you be judged. Finish the rest of the verse. The context. Okay? Look not thou upon wine when it is red. The Bible says don't even look at it. Never mind. Oh, I don't care. I just, you know. Stop making excuses. Don't look at it. First John two sixteen advertising. Christian. The foundation and the advertising of NASCAR is in violation of scripture. The Bush League is the Bush Brewing Company. 
And every car in that organization has to have the Bush emblem, which is the Bush Brewing Beer Company. And the Bible says, don't even look. Friend, if you become born again as a Bible-believing Christian under the blood of Jesus Christ, and you were involved in drinking, don't look. Parents, don't look. Teach your children, don't look. That will keep you in control. Now, for some, alcohol doesn't bother you. It doesn't bother me. You give me beer or something like that, and I take a whiff of it, it's going to smell like human urine. Instantly turns me off. Now, there are other things that Satan knows that can attract me. If you've got a problem, You need to stop getting those magazines. You need to find a magazine that does not have booze. You need to get you need to get rid of your newspaper. There's advertisements all over the place about booze. See, we're not looking. You know, just don't look at the drink. Don't look at the advertising, the pictures, and the. And that's kind of hard when you're driving down the road and you got the billboards with the junk. I'm amazed I've moved from Connecticut down to Florida. And I don't know what it is back up there in Connecticut, but down here with the convenience stores, there are more booze than there are soda. I went to one of these big name, six after ten. I wanted to get I wanted to get a, a good root beer. And I looked through the soda section, there was no root beer, but you I turned to the left and there was cases and cases of cooler of beer and wine and alcohol. I can't get a soda, but I can get the stuff that the Bible preaches again. I'm assuming I don't see the curtains come down like back in Connecticut down here in Florida. You can buy that stuff, I assume, all night long. And that's wrong. Look not thou, you, thou, upon the wine when it is what? How come red shows up twice? In the Bible, I read about a red dragon. The blood is red. Red China. Red communism. Something about red. Fire is red. Beer. Advertising. Is red. You know the big beer wagon with all the fancy horses. Uh -huh. When it it giveth his when does beer become his? Well, it's mine. No, it's not what he's talking about. It's talking about the drink itself. His color in the cup. You know, you, you know the color of this stuff. Like I said, one of them, uh, it looks like urine. Then they make you give a pee pee test, urine test. Hmm, interesting. By the way, you know that's where all that booze goes to eventually. 
It makes it, it, it it's a waste. And the stuff that your body will retain will cause you liver problems. Then they have a nerve to put on again, don't drink and drive. Like a drunk can read that. When he's had many beers. Yeah. Okay, let's get back. When it giveth his color in the cup. Now, I don't understand that. I don't understand. When it moveth itself aright. You're getting something really creepy here. The stuff moves itself. Isaiah 65 8. Do you know what beer is? It's mo it, it's it's two hundred percent water. And added to it is yeast. And when they put the yeast in there, the yeast have a bodily function called pooping. They poop. Then what you're drinking is you're drinking yeast poop. And some barley and herbs and, and, and stuff like that, but it's mostly water. It's w water being wasted to make an intoxicated drink that causes uh, troubles and death and severe problems. And when I was a child, you used, used to go get booze at the spirit shop. You know, sometimes when I heard the words of my dad was at the bar, it scared me. You know? I've got memories of what drink has done in my family. Even now it brings tears. I'm between 45 and 47 years old. I say between because I can never remember how old I am. And that stuff happened to me when I was 5, 6, 7, 8, about 13 years old. The things that my poor mother had to go through. I remember one day, one night, we had to get out of the house because of drink. My mom wasn't saved then. She's saved now. And man, God gave her a godly mother not being saved. And in that fit, we are going down Ocean Avenue in New London. And my mom told me, I know exactly where this is. I, I can I probably point to the nearest spot where this happened. She said, son, don't you ever drink. You see what troubles it caused. Smart donkey I was. I said, well, I'll just have a little. Thank God for a godly mother that, man, next thing I knew, I had a fist in my face. And you may arrest my mother. I, I'll defend her all the way. You know, you may not know what, what woe you're causing to your children and sorrows. When the Bible gives you, you say, well, listen, you're talking to Christians, how bad can it get? You only see them Sunday morning. You may see them Sunday night. You may see them the midweek service. But what goes in their house Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday is what you don't see. I 
I am sure that there are Bible Christians that are going to a Bible believing church and get drunk. And cause their family troubles and problems. And you have Proverbs 23 in your Bible that I have. You know what you could pay for the case of beer? You take two of those cases of beer, and you and your family could go to a buffet and have a good time eating. And your body will be able to use some of the stuff that you ate as nourishment. Thirty-two, I know what it says. I've already said red. 32, I understand full. At the last, when it's fermented, 31 has to do something, it's, it's stew for many. Or when you pour it, something. At the last, it biteth like a serpent well I know who the serpent is in the Bible Genesis 3 Revelation 12 how many women out there would love to, to play with a snake natural woman And yet, how many women will sit at a stool in a bar and drink this poison that bites her? You won't play with a snake, but you will be bitten by one. And sting it like an adder. Now the adder is a very, if not the poisonous snake in the Bible. I, I, I assume. Would you play with a snake? Would you let a snake purposely bite you? Listen, even those snake charmers over India. Now, I'll tell you what the trick is right now. That They break the teeth of those cobras. They underfeed those cobras. That's how they do it. He said, well, what about the one that got bit? Well, he didn't pay too much close to the snake, but it, there's a fix there. But even those those snake charmers over in India and all that, they do use precautions when it comes to their snake charming. But if you were to take a real cobra without nothing being added or changed to it and hand it to that snake charmer and say, here, use this one. Do you think he'd do it? And yet, a man will walk up to a bar, will walk up to a package store, will walk into a convenience store, and buy this snake poison. And if you have one, the Bible says, who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has babbling? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? A snake bite will bite you on one, two places in your body. He only has two fangs. On one place in your body. And your body will go to paralyze and if not treated to death attacking the heart 
and your major organs. And you say, well, how does it do that? It attacks your bloodstream that is red. You can be bit on the arm, you can be bit in the leg, and your heart will die with the venom. This is something that the Bible does not say do in moderation. And yes, sorry to say, in the New Testament, there is no chapter and verse I can say that the Bible says don't do it. I could run to Revelation 1 and says that Jesus calls us priests and kings. And I could run you to the Old Testament and says the priests were not to drink. And yes, Jesus turned water into wine. And every man in his sin who wants to do it will run to that verse. For an excuse. Well, didn't Paul tell Timothy to drink a little wine? Yeah, and you did not finish the verse for his stomach infirmity. When you're living in Eng Europe and the water has been tainted and there's only water or wine to drink, Timothy was getting sick. The water was not helping, probably making it worse. Oh, drink a little wine for this stomach, you know, Paul said, you know, Jesus turned. Why don't you run to Proverbs 23? You blasted drunk that you're laying in the gutter with your family lost. Laying in your own puke. I had a guy put a 45 to my head when I was drunk with him. A loaded 45. You don't quote who has woe, who has sorrow, who has contention. Oh, Jesus made the water wine. Can I have some money, mister? What for? Oh, I'm hungry. I'll take you over to the 7-Eleven. I'll get you some food. Well, no. Uh, no. I want to go buy booze. And you tell them the evil's a drink. Well, oh, yeah, and you get one of those two places. The Bible's not both. There are Christian families today being destroyed because of what we're reading tonight. And they hold the Bible. There is a Christian mother, wife, on her knees in tears and prayer to the Lord for him to stop. There are pastors out there who are right in the Lord and not right in the Lord. They're saying, Lord, stop this amongst that family. See, it doesn't just affect your family. It affects your church. 
And there are families in your church that know what's going on in your life, in your family. And it's all Satan, the serpent, Revelation 12, Revelation 3, Proverbs 23, 32. You know 23? You know 2 and 3 equals? Equals 5. You know 3 plus 2 equals? Equals 5. You know 5 plus 5 equals? 10. 5 death. 5 death. 10 Gentile. Double death. 2 5. You are messing. You are talking you are playing with Satan alcohol is a heart problem not sickness Verse 26, we read, my son, give me thy heart. Don't give it to Satan. Verse 19, hear thou, my son, be wise and guide thy heart. Verse 15, my son, if thy heart be wise. Verse 12, by thy heart. You can't treat the, the sin if you don't get to the heart of the matter. I didn't say disease. I said sin. S-I-N. And the only way you can treat sin and get victory is taking them to Calvary, not having a group discussion. If you don't take them to Calvary, you ain't going to get it solved. And I have dealt with men in prison that have gone to Calvary and gone with tears and gone with sorrow and gone with a true heart and have not got victory over Satan over it. This is one of them sins that, listen, God will forgive you, but the flesh is hard to fight. And for some snakes, if you get that venom in your skin, in your blood, in your blood vein, you will die. There's no hope, as in as in light. Thy eyes shall behold strange women. Wake up in the, mo in the morning. Ah! Oh, you bought me drinks last night. And then nine months later, find out what? They've got stuff today that you can put into a woman's drink and makes her uh, oozy, makes her sleepy, and you can have your way. Advertisement will use very nice, big, painted body. For their advertisement. That's not what the women look like. Any woman who drank that crap won't look like that. Alcohol gives you weight. It don't take it off. But the clothes... How'd you end up in an adulterous uh, affair? Alcohol.
Thy heart shall utter perverse things. You want to talk about someone who's really perverse in their words and language? You deal with a drunk. I think when, when a man drinks and gets drunk, I think the body reverses functions. And the sewer comes out of the mouth right down below. I'm trying to be clean. Because the sewer mouth comes out when they get drunk. Yay! Isn't that what Lucifer said as, as a serpent in Genesis chapter 3? Yea, as God said. Thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, seasick. Why would you spend all this money for something that doesn't even finish going through the body digestion system but comes back up? Been there, done that. And as somebody who drank for a living, Bacardi, you forget the beer. I drank Bacardi. I brought my own. I am going to tell you as a living sinner example that Proverbs 23 is 100% right. I've lived it. And I'm not boasting. I'm not prideful. But I can tell you for a living fact that Proverbs 23 is true. Or as he that lies upon the top of a mast. That's a sailing ship. Go on top of on one of those things and, and lay on top. It's impossible. Being drunk is impossible. It defies the human nature. God never intended a man to be intoxicated. Oh, they have freaking me. Oh, I feel so sick. Oh, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll never do it again. Oh, Lord. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, don't leave. I'm sorry. Don't laugh. I am not joking. I thank God that God has taken me out of this stuff, but my children has never, ever lived in a drunken house. I feel sorry. Listen, send me. I'll pray for you. Send me your name. If you're somehow involved in this, I'll join you in prayer. Now I shall say, was I was not sick. I don't get sick. I never throw up. You're so drunk, you didn't even know what you did. They have beaten me. <laughs> well, drunk will wake up in the morning. He has bruises and all that. He doesn't know where he got. Oh, what happened to me this weekend? Ha ha ha! And I felt it not. Do you know what the anesthesia anesthesia was used during the Civil War? They gave him a bottle of liquor here, drank it, and put a stick in his mouth as they would cut away his leg or his arm that needed to be amputated. Because it removes the pain. 
You know why a drunk comes out of a motor vehicle accident, great and all that, and other people will die? It, it, it removes the pain. There are people out there who will use whiskey only because they've got severe toothache. Now we're going to come in uh, Proverbs 30, I believe, is the, the only case that the Bible gives really gives somebody a drink is when they're dying and they're in pain. I mean, was it wrong to give the soldiers whiskey? Listen, if they're not about to cut off your, your leg or your arm and they don't have a needle to give you, all right, go ahead. By the way, usually, usually, even after the amputation, they didn't live long after that. Very, very rarely did they live long. When I shall awake. The next six words are words that your family fears. I wonder if there's a mother or a, or a child that prays that Friday doesn't come. Oh, I bet you the bar owner wants it to come. I bet you the package store loves it. The grocery stores love it. Look what it says. I will seek it yet again. Even though I destroyed my family's life. One more round, boys. It's on me. Though I have almost on the brink of losing my job, look at the pretty ads in the in the in the magazine, especially around Christmas. Excuse me, sir, but your test result came back. Your liver has cirrhosis. And all the beer drinking on the television. Hey, how you doing, ding dong? Hey, well, can I get you a drink? Come over to my house, we'll have a adulterous love affair. You want a drink? May I pour you something? Dear, give me a beer. When God warns you against it, stop holding the package store and way home. Though it causes death among automobile accidents, I go in to get some gas, I'm going to run in and buy the boo. And then they card you by the driver's license that you need to hold to drive the car soberly. They use for you to buy the boo. You understand that? You are given a driver's license, and they use it for you to be carded to, for your age to buy booze. And the government gives them a liquor license to sell it to you to ruin your family and others. And just turn around and say, we got a big drinking problem. No, you don't. Go back to prohibition. And with the awful words and the stupid words, we'll close. I will seek it yet again. You fool. You fool. And don't underestimate the power of Satan. You don't believe Satan is real? What did Proverbs 23 just tell you? 
He just has these going all through that. He'll do it again. The evil's a drink. There are strong warnings. 